I've been using iOS 26 for a couple weeks now, really ever since it's come out from the betas. And honestly, I think the redesign is actually a slightly bigger deal than I initially thought it was. It might even pull me back to iPhone as my main phone, but we'll talk about that more as we get into the details. Well, you know, people keep telling me I gotta go out and touch some grass, so you know, here I am. There's footage of it now, so you guys don't have to keep telling me. I'm not always inside. I've also been a big fan of like how the Safari bar at the bottom works. It expands and like disappears basically as you keep going. I think that's super, super sleek and minimal. I'm honestly not a huge fan of that you have to tap this and then go to all tabs to get to your tab view. You used to kind of be able to just tap the tabs and it would go right there. I think that's a little annoying, but besides that, I really like the new Safari redesign. And just all these subtle animations throughout the interface has been crazy to see. I mean, just the way even Control Center looks now, I think it looks improved. I still wish you could actually adjust the brightness and see your home screen at the same time like you can on Android. <coughs> Apple can get on that. but. At least with this more transparent control center, you can kind of see it a little bit better. So actually, right as I was editing this video here on Monday, Apple released beta two of iOS 26, and there were some improvements on some of the stuff I just talked about. So one of the things was this bar, this tab bar for Safari, and it did make several improvements. You tap into a page and then use the back button. You actually get a forward button, which didn't always show up last time. And my biggest complaint, which was the all tabs was kind of hard to get to, is much easier now. You tap the three dots and it's right there and a new tab button is down here instead of way up here. All your different Safari profiles are right here as well and easy to get to. So I think that is a much, much better layout. It's just two taps now to get there. I'm a big fan of that. Huge improvement and everything's just a lot more fluid already. Also another one was the control center, which some people were saying it was too hard to read and they weren't able to see things properly. Well, that's significantly better here as well. They added more blur behind it and a bit more of frosting to these controls. And I think that was good because pretty much everywhere else, I was fine with how translucent things were, but it was a little hard sometimes to see some of these controls, especially when you have words on them like these different home kit controls as well. So good on Apple to fix those couple issues and everything's running a lot more fluid and smooth in this beta as well. Also the passcode buttons, at least for me, looked really weird in beta one and they were like super, super hard to see the numbers. So I think they look much, much better in beta two. But I updated my iPad as well. So if you guys are curious on that and how this has been updated and if there's any improvements to some of the different multitasking and window management, I will be happy to answer all those different questions. Still no freely resizing on Final Cut Pro here. It's kind of locked to portrait mode or the iPad's aspect ratio. Music has been phenomenal. I like the redesign on there as well how it basically disappears and at the bottom and then it's there when you need it. And even that animation of the bubble going back and forth, it's pretty epic. And yeah, the auto mixing, having that on and hearing the songs transition more fluidly has been an underrated feature. I did not think I was gonna like it as much. Yeah, when I tried it the first time, I was like, wow, that is actually pretty epic. I mean, those have been like some of my bigger highlights of iOS 26 now, and I'm just getting started. I mean, the I like the new unified phone app where everything's a little bit easier to use. Uh, there's actually a, a call button. You don't just auto call someone when you tap on their contact. I always thought that was annoying, so I'm glad that's been fixed. Messages has been great. I'll blur out the specifics, but yeah, this like being able to set a background has been super, super nice and clean looking. I mean, I know people are already saying it basically just looks like WhatsApp and you know what, that's fine. I mean, a lot of those dedicated messenger apps do have a lot of great features. I wish 
Google Messages on Android could implement all that into RCS, but I kind of feel like RCS still doesn't have the same iMessage has, so it's going to be a little hard to replicate all of that, but I hope they can get it, and I hope Apple just keeps supporting them. Sounds like they're going to support end-to-end -end encrypted RCS messages coming later this year at some point, so they're they're getting a little bit better talking to each other, but there's still probably going to be green bubbles and they'll still be, they'll still have some limitations. It's so, it seems like Apple's trying to add more features to iMessage, kind of to still make iMessage feel cooler. So people like don't switch away because, you know, they have iMessage and it's, I don't think iMessage is that great, but I do love the subtle animations of even when you go to tap and bring up the keyboard. I like the curved edges in the keyboard is pretty nice. I also noticed that when you type, it doesn't actually highlight the, the letter and make it big above you anymore. It just kind of lights up, which I think is interesting, an interesting change. So it's like they feel like they don't need to do that anymore. I don't know. If I sent a message, even the animation as it sends, it's just a little bit more fluid, a little more bouncy. I still think camera control on the iPhone 16s is kind of weird because it's, I notice that Apple actually disabled, that's a leaf, it scared me. <laughs> Apple actually disabled one of the main features of camera control by default in iOS 26. So, you know, when you press down on it, it's supposed to bring up this little window where you can zoom in or whatever. That's disabled by default. The only thing that's actually enabled is when you hold down on it and it does like a focus lock. That's what all it does by default on iOS 26, which it almost seems like Apple themselves is admitting that this isn't really that great of an idea and their whole, like trying to arc your finger up here and do those changes, it doesn't actually feel that natural. It feels way more natural to just use the screen. But here's the new always on display with a larger time and some of the widgets in the bottom. I think that is really neat. I'm kind of gushy on it right now because I'm, it's new and it's all the stuff that's exciting to try out. There are flaws, there are definitely bugs in beta one, but it's developer beta one, so I expect that. But yeah, I think I was a little wrong. I think I, I downplayed the update. I was like, okay, Apple, when they first announced it, they basically showed a home screen. It looked pretty identical to their previous home screen. And I was kind of like, that's their big redesign. But when you look closely, even all the apps and everything, they're so much richer. So I mean, as you can see, like all these apps just have a level of depth and glassiness to them they just never had before. I really like how like some of the YouTube apps are looking. They've already looked like they've updated to the new look. I love the new mail app icon and files and it just, the attention to detail and photos here and everything like that just looks really, really great. You can even find liquid glass in like files here as you swipe over and just that glassy look. Pretty much every toggle is now like a glass element that you can move between. And like all these sliders, they have like the glass effect to them. Even the little toggles, if you hold down, they give that bubble effect. It's kind of weird that they still snap back to a white thing afterwards, like all white. I think they should have some transparency to them, but I like that animation at least. That animation is really good. I also like the I love the refraction when the lock screen and notification center comes back down. Like that is so well done. That refraction is one of the best parts of liquid glass. It gives it its richness. It's, it's beyond, because a lot of people were like, that will just market transparency as a breaking fe new feature. And no, they really didn't. I think that's a grave oversimplification Sorry, I had a bad experience with a Hornet lately. You know, just, I got my eyes on them. Apple didn't just market transparency as this breaking new feature. They really took time and energy to figure out the nitty gritty details of this beyond anything I've ever seen. Like I've been using One UI on my S25 Ultra for a while and it's still really, really good. It's not like it's a bad operating system, but the level of depth of iOS 26 is beyond anything I've ever used before. And especially with all the enhancements they gave to the iPad with the new windowing system and all that stuff, iOS and iPad iOS 26 was a pretty big update. I have to admit that. Really, I, I don't know of much else I think I could want from Apple besides a little bit more control over like audio inputs and outputs. Android has such a beautiful way of adjusting every single different kind of ringer or audio or stuff like that at the same time. But 
Apple doesn't really have that, and that's very disappointing. I think that would be epic to see on iOS. And I'm a sucker for a good stylus. So if they add some stylus support to the iPhone, I think I would probably never switch away from it. That's honestly a big thing that I'm going to give up if I do switch away from my S25 Ultra, which is oddly enough recording this video on the iPhone. So how do you feel about that, guys? I don't know. All of these features really add something. Yeah, they're not huge functional differences where it's like, this just changes the way I use my phone. But they're things when you use it, you're like, ah, oh, that's nice. That just makes me happy. And it's just a quality of life improvement. That, and you know what? I'm here for quality of life improvements as well. So obviously the camera app got like a pretty big redesign. Yeah, I love that pop-up window where you can adjust all the different settings that you need to get to and everything is just kind of right there all that you need to adjust even more kind of pop-ups right there exposure settings all that kind of stuff and then you just swipe to the side you can get the different kinds of photos swipe to the other side you get the different kinds of videos now for new users they might be a little confused and think that that's not even on the iphone anymore so you kind of got to watch out for that but yeah i think it's really neat that they're it's minimal when you first open up. It's like, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna take a photo or are you gonna take a video? And for the most part, if you just take, wanna take a photo and you switch to this mode, it captures everything you need to capture. I mean, it does portrait mode by default on the newer iPhones too. But then you get all the nice settings right here so you can change if it's a raw photo, you can go 48 or 12 megapixels. But I think it's super cool that you can change the megapixel and see everything in this little pop-up window. But it tells you what you're shooting with at all times and it's not taking over your screen. I think, Honestly, this is a very, very great camera app. It's definitely not like a pro camera app. I think if you're gonna do professional stuff, you're gonna still wanna use Apple's Final Cut camera or the Blackmagic camera app to do a bit more pro settings on the iPhone. But for any normal photo and video, I even use that for B-roll a lot of times too because the native camera app stabilization is really, really good. It's probably unmatched by even any Android phone. iPhone's native camera app stabilization is crazy good. But yeah, I think that's some of the biggest things I've noticed on my iPhone. Let me know in the comments down below if you've been using the beta and some of the best animations and new features you've noticed on your iPhone.